Traders, welcome back to another price action trading lesson. We're looking at SP 500 and mini futures. And today's session opened with quite a difficult structure to navigate. Why? Well, because we have slight bullish bias, but at the same time, the bias is not as strong for us to be trading this as a bullish trend because you can see EMA is flattening and we have also consolidation, small trend range being formed. The trend range is not as healthy because you can see there's empty room at the bottom, a lot of empty room. So we have just bullish price action working higher, bearish reversal down, news announcement that generated massive bullish spike up. So you can see not easy structure to trade because it looks like a trend range with a very slight bullish bias. And as a price action trader, when you have conflicting variables, you have to be careful. So right now we cannot sell because it was too bullish, but at the same time, we cannot go long right into these highs. So we're going to be waiting and see what the price session does. Okay, you have a break new extreme. And now you would expect if the trend range is going to be the pattern for price session to go all the way down here, or at least test the midline. But notice what happened. We're back above EMA. So it's the first sign. Hold on. Market might be a little bit too bullish. This news announcement may generate a brand new bullish spike and momentum on its own. So let's see what's going to happen. Still above EMA and now we have triple test. One bounce, second bounce, third bounce. And this is a big sign what is happening here. The fact that we can't even make it to the midline, let alone the support. So much empty room here, so much empty room here. Massive bullish spike out the news. This triple test is a decent first setup you can consider. A little bit more aggressive because the bullish structure is not as easy to see, but you can definitely make a case for triple test. Down trend played a bit to break new extreme and the fact that you're back above EMA and the support is holding is a good sign the market is going to go higher. Now we have high low breakout pullback, but you're too close to these highs. We can't really justify it. It worked anyway. All these sellers got trapped. So much empty room bullish imbalance and market keeps working here. Okay, so now I have to zoom back and I have to understand what is happening because after we pushed higher now and the trend range was negated, this means there is some form of an uptrend being present. Okay, because every single major low and high is higher than the previous one. So we have some form of an uptrend working higher. If I'm going to zoom back, I like drawing the wider channel from previous day because I have a lot of confirmations. You can see it fits quite well. Let me adjust it a little bit like this, copy it. But at the top also if you're not sure what is the right channel you can take a look at 10,000 tick chart because there it is much easier for you to see what is the overall pattern so right now how strong is this trend because we've identified that the market is somewhat bullish based on the price action but i need to identify the strength of the trend it is weak broad pullbacks deep corrections we're breaking below ema this means if there's going to be to like a pullback at the EMA at the top of the push phase, I cannot take it because it is weak. We can have stronger pullback. Now we're breaking below EMA anyway, so there is no second entry long. I have to redraw a brand new downtrend working lower. Okay, you can make a case for going long here, but you can't because the downtrend is in play and you broke below EMA. So you now definitely need to see high low above the EMA. Okay, we keep working lower and now notice what happened. This downtrend played out with the break and a new extreme and in fact you can observe the market nature market moves in pairs of twos the push above ema right now what is it telling you well it's confirming that the bullish bias is kicking in and our channel that we've identified right now is going to be valid because the push phase is starting market is not reversing it's not negating the channel in fact you're above ema that's confirming the uptrend so you want to see high low or felt second entry short yes you have high low here but it is so far from the ema you can't even make a case for this. We need to take a setup at the key entry point. This is not at the EMA or the trend line. It's simply just hanging there. You can't take it. Okay, this is nice. At this point, I'm really trusting the bullish uptrend. I want to see two leg pull back at the EMA. But notice what is happening. We have massive overshoot. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to talk about the structure. Why is this overshoot? Well, because market seeks equilibrium. You can see push phase, correction phase, push phase, correction phase, push phase, correction phase, push phase. And while you're looking for correction phase, you cannot get it. Okay. There is no correction phase. Market keeps pushing higher and keeps pushing higher. We don't need any indicator. You can see how the channel fits. Structure is oscillating inside this channel, pure price action. And once you break the trend channel line, overbought territory, this is overshoot. Correction phase is missing. And what does this mean? We can have stronger pullback in the opposite direction. So right now what you have to do is a little bit shame because when the final channel is established, 
you instantly have overshoot, but it's part of trading. You trade a market you get, not the market you want. We're pulling back. Overshoot means I'm going to be drawing the downtrend and I have to skip the very first second entry long. Now, sometimes there can be a brand new trend established if the overshoot is too strong. But even in that scenario, you still would like to see high low confirmation of the second entry long. So we have new high, first entry long here. You cannot take second entry long below EMA after overshoot. You may play with the idea of considering high low. That's not a bad thinking process because this push up was quite strong, but you never got the high low market push all the way back down. And this is basically telling you, okay, there is no brand new uptrend established on its own because there's going to be brand new uptrend established on its own. We're going to go higher. The fact that we're back below EMA means that this is indeed overshoot of this bigger pattern. So I need to be careful now. I don't like selling because we traded up. At the same time, I cannot go long because you simply cannot predict how many pushes lower there is going to be because overshoot can have stronger momentum than normal correction. Okay, we can see we are pushing above EMA and there's some bottoming pattern. The push phase is smaller and smaller. So we can see also EMA flattening. So you can start to hint the structure is going to be some consolidation. Now you have high low, but you simply cannot take high low just yet. It is still below EMA, but let's say hypothetically it closed above EMA. You still can't take it because you had overshoot that can generate stronger pullback. Okay, you need felt second entry short at least after overshoot. It is too risky because the trend range also is just about to be established. You don't have confirmed trend range yet, so you just can't take this high low no matter how much you want. Okay, this is interesting. Now we have felt second entry short, new low, first entry short, second entry short failure, off the trend line, off the EMA, and that is now a stronger setup. That is a stronger trap. But look at the momentum. The bar must have been very bearish, and towards the close, buyer stepped in, bullish pin bar closing so far up. This is decent felt second entry short. It is stronger than the high low, and the fact that EMA keeps holding again, that's a decent sign. Okay, the overshoot may be dissipating, we are starting to round the bottom, pushing above EMA and the bullish momentum is about to kick in because we traded up into this market. Okay, I'm going to adjust the channel a little bit because it doesn't fit as well. It actually is a spike and the channel pattern. You can see it fits much better. Small break, new extreme. We spike down. I'm going to draw another spike in the channel because you have very first lag, break into the secondary lag. Now, can you think about short opportunities? Well, if you're an advanced trader, you can identify some local traps. Advanced professional price action traders, they have the ability through the experience to identify some small local traps to the downside. But if you're a developing trader, you're always going to make the most focusing on with trend setups. Okay, it is always easy and you're going to make your trading easier if you're just going to follow the main bias. Okay, because your margin for error is much bigger because you can basically pick a bottom and still there's a high chance it's going to go higher rather than picking a top. You never know if the push is going to break the highs and market is going to continue working higher. So yes, you had overshoot, which can generate stronger pullback. But as a beginner trader, don't overcomplicate it. Look for with trend setups. That's the easiest part of trading when you're trading a structure like this. Also, you can see trading range right now is getting very confirmed. So you can start applying not only trend rules, buying, but also trend range rules, buying low or selling high. We're not going to be selling high because you traded up. So you can right now combine additional key entry point. You traded up. So you can be thinking about buying low. Let's see what's going to happen. And this is interesting because the support is holding nice bullish bar. And this is actually triple test. One bounce, second bounce, triple bottom. Now, I didn't take this setup. Why? Because we had overshoot and if I'm going to measure the first lag, you actually didn't fully reach the measured move. Now, that's not as important. Okay, measured moves are just an idea where the target is going to be, especially if this key level is going to come into play. It's definitely reasonable to expect that buyers will step in here and there is not going to be enough momentum to reach the measured move. But if I'm going to combine the fact that the measured move was not reached and we had overshoot, I skipped it, but I can definitely see a trader making a case for this because the stop loss is quite small, the risk is tiny, you're buying the bottom, great single bar, you know, trading is about taking a chance, you're a trader, you're buying the bottom with the direction of the main trend, decent setup, 
I was just a little bit leery because overshoot can generate stronger pullback. And when I'm trading overshoot, I want to see something like this push above EMA to confirm the bullish resumption. That's always the safest option. And lo and behold, push above EMA, EMA holding, repeat pattern of this. You're taking high low above EMA. This is a great high priority setup because it looks like the push phase is resuming. The support is holding. We're above EMA, down trend with the break and move to a new extreme. I forgot to mark breaking your low here breaking your low here this is why you're trusting buying opportunities here because the downtrend played out okay now you have another felt second entry short problem is you're buying quite far up in the middle of the string range you know it is not a horrible setup by any means in fact it made the scalp you can see two and a half points so it easily made the eight ticks but you know you're buying quite high why you're not in this trade this is a decent setup definitely if your thinking process is trying to go long here because the seller selling second entry above ema they got trapped so your thinking process is correct it made the scalp but you're in the middle of the trading range now you're at the top of this push up you know it's a little bit more aggressive i'm not gonna mark it but it's not the bad setup by any means hold on why are we not making it to this resistance okay now we're back above ema we have another high low and this uptrend is new high problem is small resistance here although it may be insignificant because the main bias is bullish but we prefer to be buying low or right after push above ema now you're buying quite at the top of the move again now it still worked but it feels way more advanced and you can see market moves in pairs of two with one leg up break second leg up you have the break and the new high of this uptrend so market is correcting so right now what's going through my mind i want to see this correction phase ending breaking new low at the bottom okay and then i want to see a repeat pattern of this or this i want to see push above ema and a high low or felt second entry short i cannot take high low below ema doji i'm waiting break a new extreme finally but i cannot go long here look at the horrible signal bar massive tail at the top horrible bar definitely to see push above ema but hold on market is reversing to the downside now am i worried that this is happening not really because i'm gonna zoom back and we're gonna talk about what is the overall structure once again you can use the 10,000 tick chart to understand what is the big picture it is a little bit easier to see overshoot it took a long time finally broke the trend line Okay, very common behavior when you have overshoot market six equilibrium so now because you traded up into this this big channel needs to get new high you're expecting new high and this is a bell breakout out of this trading range you're using another price session rule and most breakouts will fail okay so you're thinking okay this breakout is going to fail we're going to go higher test the new high so i'm not going to be drawing wider downtrend like this in fact i'm going to be observing this as a one leg down break second leg down that is much better alternative because it is with the main bullish bias you know you have a high low here confirmation of the fell breakout which is not a bad setup by any means but this push down was quite strong you know this is no ordinary tiny pullback this is quite significant trend down now so this high low is a little bit more advanced but once again your thinking process is correct and it is underrated but your thinking process if it is correct that's actually a very good sign you're reading this correctly every single time you're not lost in the market that's a good sign you're understanding what the market is doing so you're pushing above ema now there's a felt second entry short here now i was afraid that this key level is in a way okay because what if sellers are still going to be holding this key level so i wanted to see push above ema and then signs we are back at this trend range at this key level support holding and i was looking for second entry but if you took a felt second entry short here i can see why it's not a bad setup by any means oh i forgot to draw why the trend line now you have high low confirmation setup what is this high low confirming it's confirming the felt second entry short so you can consider another high probability setup high low confirmation setup this high low would have ended up failing on you it would have stopped you out but it's okay that's a decent setup 
And now you can also have new low first entry short pullback, second entry short failure, another 12 second entry short, big bullish bar. Why are we thinking going long? Well, because breakout will fail. We expect new high, you're above EMA, and the sellers who are playing this big downtrend, they're gonna get trapped, expecting new extreme. All of these sellers are getting trapped. Market keeps going higher. I didn't take any of these setups because once again, I wanted to see push back in this trend range. I wanted to see, okay, we finally are back at this price level. The support is holding, but I am marking these setups in case you're a beginner trader, your thinking process is correct. And you can definitely make a case for a couple of these setups to ride the wave to the upside. But now when I'm finally back in the trend range, it is safe. I'm going to make the channel just a tad wider because it is with the direction of the main trend and we need to get new high, remember? Okay, and it still fits here. So I wanna see second entry long at the EMA, but the EMA is not holding. And that's a problem. I cannot take, of course, second entry long below EMA. It didn't even trigger. You cannot take second entry long below EMA above Warbleberry bar. So waiting area, you have to be careful. You're back above, okay. And you can see small congestion was established. Let EMA in the middle of these bars and notice what we have. Breakout, pullback pattern of this congestion, downtrend played out with the break, move to new extreme. This is a high low that is also a breakout pullback. You need to get new high for this uptrend, new high for the main channel. EMA is holding, main support is holding. Great high about this setup, only negative. It is a horrible doji, actually, not horrible. You know, these dojis are not as bad. As it seems, it is just neutral bar and you want to see some momentum. Had this close a bit more bullish when you have brought this setup, you need to get new highs and now market is about to close. So this is the overall structure for today. It was quite a unique day, especially the first half. Now, I didn't trade during the first half. I was just watching the market. I wasn't even participating. Why? Well, because simply I had no idea what is the bias because it looked like a trend range, but it kept pushing higher so there was some slight bullish bias but I couldn't find any solid wide channel that would be confirmed and when I don't have a channel that I trust I simply don't want to be rushing things don't want to be pushing my luck so we just simply lay back observing the price action and then when the uptrend got established we instantly had overshoot so I took my break here a little bit earlier because I was ready to take the second part of the day so you can see it is not a bad thing to wait when you have conflicting variables and when it is not easy to trade. In fact, that's a very good sign. You are a mature trader when you don't feel the need to take a setup. So when the market opened and it looked like this, it was too rangy, but it kept pushing higher and there was no good channel established just yet. It's okay to be patient. Beginner traders, they want to look for setups on every single channel. They want to take every second entry long without even having a confirmation of their channel or understanding where the market is going. Okay. Remember the pattern, that's the last thing after understanding the context, the bias and the key entry point. Okay. These patterns still work. You can have a good win rate just following these patterns, but that's not what price session trading is about. Okay. You cannot just take any second entry because the win rate is not going to be as high. You want to have confidence that you're taking the pattern the second entry with the trend at the confirmed key entry point. So I didn't take any setup here. I simply wasn't even looking for setups. I was just watching market develop patiently waiting and finally here it got a little bit easy to identify the structure because we traded up you also have a train range and then break and new high is expected so i hope you had a good train day i'm gonna wrap it up and i'm gonna to talk to you next time good luck with your trading